sometimes in life, we face fires. This is truth. As I began to develop this word two weeks ago that the Lord gave me, and I was praying about it, and I was seeking the Lord, and I was like, God, you know, what do you mean? What, 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 what do you mean fire? And as I began to pray about it, and the Lord began to just unpack this for me as I was reading through my Bible, life happens. And for some of you guys don't know, um, just a couple in our church this past week, house burnt to the ground. I get a phone call the other day. Another person in the church calls me. His son and others were in a bad car wreck. Fires happen, sometimes literal, sometimes figurative. Life around us has a way of trying to consume us, to burn us up. But can I tell you, <laughs> see, if we want to go through the fire, if we want to go through the fire like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, number one, we must have faith in the I am. See, pastor talked about last week the I am. Who do you say I am? Who do men say I am? You know, <laughs> I, I don't think I could have put it better. Pastor was speaking last week, and he said a couple things I want to r remind you of that really just, uh, they're, they're no truer words. He said a person's peace, trust, faith, etc., will never rise above their knowledge of God will never rise above their knowledge of God. And as I began to read through this passage in Daniel chapter 3, and I begin to read about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego getting thrown into this fire, and I'm sitting there, and, 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 and pastor says, you know, the, the, the faith will never rise above their knowledge of God. And I'm like, okay, well, what was, Dan, what was the, the knowledge of God they had in Daniel 3? Right? That, that calls them to look at a king who's saying, I'm going to kill you if you don't do what I say. What, what knowledge did they have? What knowledge did they have? So as I was reading Daniel chapter 3, I saw something that stood out to me, and I, I flipped back over my Bible to Isaiah. See, Isaiah was a prophet of God for the people of Israel, and Isaiah prophesied some pretty harsh things, but he also prophesied some pretty amazing things. See, in Isaiah chapter 43, <laughs> verses 1 through 3 says this, But now thus says the Lord, in Daniel chapter 3, let me remind you, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego know this, okay? They know Isaiah 43. This is already knowledge to them. It says, but now thus saith the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. This is remembrance of the Red Sea. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall no, not overwhelm you. <laughs> when you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. And the flames will not consume you. For I, the Lord, your, and the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. See, that passage says two things. It says two things. The first is, is a remembrance. When you walk through the waters... I'm with you. You remember when you was getting chased by Egypt and I had your back when you was up against the Red Sea and I split it apart and you walked right through it, didn't even get wet? Remember that? He says something else right behind it that ain't happened yet. When you go through the fires, you won't be burnt. See, they understood God's promises. They had a knowledge of God that elevated God rightly to who he is. See, Pastor talked last week about that. Our knowledge of God, will, will, our peace, trust, faith will never rise above our knowledge of God. See, they had a knowledge of God that elevated God rightly to where he was. They knew their God. They didn't have a question, a doubt. They knew their God. But you know what's amazing about the fact that they knew their God? They still didn't care about end results. Because they said to the king, they said, our God can deliver and we believe that he will. But if he don't, que sera, sera. What will be, will be. Throw me in the fire, see what happens. I may smell like a good burning incense. I don't know. 
may smell like a ribeye. I'm not sure. They didn't care. They trusted their God beyond their understanding. See, they had faith in the I am. I've talked to plenty of people, plenty of people in my life who say they have faith. When I ask a lot of them, I say, well, what do you have faith in? I usually get some super vague answer. Well, you know, I believe God is God. What do you mean? What, what does that mean? God is God. Well, you know that, you know, um, you know, he, he, um, he's God and, you know, no, I don't know. What, what does that mean? God is God. Like, is that, is that where your faith is? That God is God? Well, yes, he's God, but what does that mean? There's got to be a definition. There's got to be an understanding. See, as I was uh, thinking about that, and, 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 and the truth is, <laughs> how, how, can, how can we have a faith? How can we have a faith in something we have no knowledge of? Right? How, how can we have a faith in something we, we have no zero knowledge? Uh, as my grandmother would say, zero de l'épicion, nothing. Zero, it means zero in the sand and the wind blows it away. It's not even zero anymore. Like we have zero understanding. How can we have faith in something we don't know? See, faith is not in something we don't know. Hmm. You ain't listening to me this morning. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. I've heard plenty of people quote this verse to me as when I say, well, what does that mean? Well, you know, I, I have faith and I don't see it. I don't know what it is I have faith in, but I have faith in it. That's not what this passage means. That, that's not even close. I'll break it down for you. Um, when I took this verse for this morning and, and broke it down in the Greek and started searching out the words and understanding the context and the, the, the definitions of the words in the passage in Hebrews 11.1, 1, I'm going to break it down for you in Colby, okay? Because Colby seems to be more understandable to me. Don't know if it is to you, but it is to me. Um, when you break this passage down, this is Hebrews 11.1, 1, the Colby translation, okay? The KJV, the Colby James version. Um, Hebrews 11.1 1 says this, faith is the guarantee that the promises God made you that you are waiting to see is done, even when you don't see it yet in the natural. Faith is the guarantee that the promises God made you, the promises God's made you that you are waiting to see are done, even when you don't see it in the natural. That's what that passage means. I don't see it yet in the natural, but I have a guarantee of faith that is done, God's promises. But guess what? Can I sell you a guarantee without a product? Can I sell you a guarantee without a product? No, I can't sell you a guarantee for nothing. I can sell you a guarantee for something. The guarantee is in the promises of God. The promises of God. How can you know what you have a guarantee for if you don't know the promises? How can you have faith without knowledge? See, Faith is not just an emotion. Faith is content. Faith is based in something. It's not blind. See, the world would have, have each other think that, oh, those Christians over there, they just have some blind faith and some spaghetti monster whatever. They, they think we're a bunch of, bunch of ignorant people. Some of us are. Myself sometimes included. But the truth is, faith is not based in ignorance. Faith is based in understanding. Faith is based in information about God and who he is and who he says you are. That's where my faith lies. See, Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes from hearing 
and hearing through the word of Christ. It's like Pastor said last week, if you want to know who God is, who the I am is, look at Christ. Because Christ is the fulfillment of the I am. He is the embodiment of the I am. See, if we want to go through the fire, first thing, we must have faith in the I am. Second thing, we must trust that he, being God, being Christ, makes intercession for you and me. Hebrews 7.25 says, Consequently, he is able to save to the utmost those who draw near to God through him, him being Christ, since he always lives to make intercession for them. What does that word mean, intercession? I want to break down the definition of intercession for you real quick. Intercession means to go to or meet a person, especially for the purpose of conversation, to make a petition. To make a petition. Christ is interceding for me. What does that mean? That means Christ has gone to the Father in my place and is petitioning on my behalf to the Father. But the good thing about God's, Christ's petition is it's not based on my works or ability. Christ's petition to the Father is based on himself. God is vouching for himself. God is vouching for himself on my behalf, even though I don't deserve it. That's what that means. It sounds like Christ is my ride or die. Anybody know what a ride or die is? Anybody got a ride or die? Y'all act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. I know y'all know better. Um, actually, I was, I was laughing. I wrote ride or die, and I was thinking, well, technically Jesus rode and died, you know, but, you know, um, but he is my ride or die. He's got my back. Ain't nothing going to happen as long as Jesus with me. And I would say rolling with the homies, but it's more like rolling with the Holy Spirit, you know, but I'm not a rapper, so you won't get me to doing that. My name is Kobe James, and I'm, you know, I was playing. <laughs> Jesus got my back, man. Matter of fact, not only does Jesus have my back, God is three in one. God is three in one. Jesus has my back. The Holy Spirit got my back. The Father got my back. Jesus says, if an earthly father desires good things for you, how much more does the heavenly father desire for you to have? The, the Father got my back. Jesus got my back. He's making intercession for me. Matter of fact, in Romans, we learn that the Holy Spirit intercedes for me. Romans 8.26 says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. The Spirit is interceding for me. The, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God that is inside of me is making petitions on my behalf, not based on me, in spite of me. Even when I find myself in a situation I cannot understand or even begin to understand, when the flames are around me, the Holy Spirit got me. We've got to trust that he makes intercession for me. Third thing, to go through the flames, man. Uh, again, got to have faith in the I am. Got to trust he makes intercession. We got to rest in his finished work. Yo, I can't say this enough. I know every time I get up here to preach, I feel like I echo this, this truth uh, about resting in the finished work of Christ. And I feel like Pastor echoes it too, resting in the finished work of Christ. But I'm telling you, when you understand the finished work, your life will never be the same. I can't, I, like, I want to laugh right now because I think about myself before I trusted the finished work and how, how I was always trying so hard and always coming up short. But when I begin to trust the finished work that Jesus already did, all I got to do is receive. You know, I... Let me, let me tell you something. Some people might say, well, that's really hard to trust in the finished work because it's hard to see. I gave an analogy the other day, and I really like it. I'm going to use it again. <clears throat> I'm holding this box up by using what? 
muscles in my hand, right? I'm squeezing this box. I'm holding it, okay? I'm using muscles in my hand. But when I don't use the muscles, what happens to the box? See that box down there? That's doubt. It takes effort to doubt. It takes zero effort to trust. Zero effort. Because all you got to do is let go. Holding on takes more strength than letting go. Holding on is the part that's hard, not the trusting. Letting go is the easiest thing you'll ever learn to do. But we have so much pride because letting go means I didn't do it. We got so much pride that we think if I step in that flame, you know, I got this. Come on now. You seriously think you're going to walk through them flames by yourself, of yourself? Come, come on now. E even the world going to tell you that's a dumb idea. We must rest in his finished work. Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 30 says this. Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden. That means weighed down. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. You will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. Last week before service, the Lord put something on my heart, and it kind of tied in with this message this morning, but uh, it was a quote from St. Augustine, and it says, Thou hast formed us for thyself." And our hearts are restless till they find rest in thee. The truth is you will always be restless until you find the rest in the finished work. You will always be exhausted. I mean burnt to a crisp. Candle burn at both ends. You will be burnt out, dried out, wasted away if you keep trying. But when you rest in his finished work... <laughs> It's the easiest thing. When we finally grasp what Peter writes in 2 Peter 1, 3 through 4, we can't help but rest. But I want you to hear it this morning. 2 Peter 1, 3 through 4 says, His, being God, His, not mine, divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us to His own. Knowledge of Him. Not blind faith. Knowledge of Him called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, his promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. When we rest in him, when we lean into him, we become partakers of the thing he earned I couldn't get. We get it. We get something we never earned, never could earn. We, all we have to do, all we have to do is let go. All we have to do is lay down pride. 1 Corinthians 1, 30 through 31 says, And because of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Not in themselves, not in their ability, not in what they did, boast in the Lord, because the Lord's the only one who can do it. I know I sound like a broken record. Broken record, broken record, broken record. Rest in Christ. Rest in Christ. If we want to make it through the flames in life, man, <laughs> we got to rest in Christ. I, I remember when I was reading through Romans in Bible college, and Romans is what they call like the, the all-encompassing book, right, of the New Testament theology. Like everything you could think about God, Paul addresses in the book of Romans. Okay? He, he spits it out. Everything right there on a plate. I was reading through Romans, and in Romans 5, when I got to Romans 5, and I'm reading through as, as Paul is writing and talking about our sin, and, and he says, you know, uh, whereby through one man, Adam, one man's sin came into all of creation. 
if we understand that and we believe that, and how many in this room would say, I believe that? If by one man, Adam, sin entered into the entirety of creation, how hard is it to understand that by one man, Christ, salvation entered into all of creation? And we were formerly inheritors of Adam's sin. One man, sin, entered me. Not only is my record sin, but my DNA is sin. Jesus came in, wiped my record, and gave me a new DNA. And I inherit that. I just got to rest in it. Fourth thing this morning, if you want to walk through the flame, you got to trust that he's equipped you. As I was reading through this passage in Daniel chapter 3, Sorry, I got my big Bible up here this morning. I couldn't find my small one. This thing is like a brick. As I was reading through Daniel chapter 3, and I was studying this out and, and, and uh, listening to the Lord as he was laying this out in front of me, I, I began to, in my spirit, the spirit began to lead me in a different direction. And I was like, well, okay, God, is this message over here for another day? And this one is what you really want me to work on? And the Lord said, no, this is a two-part. He brought me over to the New Testament. And, and as I was thinking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and being in the fiery furnace and, and, and going through the fire, and I'm like, okay, God, if we're going to go through the fire, you know, we got to trust in the I am. That's right, God. I trust you are I am, and, 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 and I'm going to rest in you, God, and, 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 and yeah. And God brought me to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verses uh, 1 through 11 says this. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as fire appeared on them and rested on each one. And they were filled with all with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitudes came together and they were bewildered because each one of them was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these men speaking Galileans? Just means simple folk. How is it that we hear each of us in our own language, native language, Parthians, uh, uh, you know, all these countries and residents? Jump down to verse 11. Both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and uh, Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. I was praying about walking through the fire, you know, and when God brought me to Acts chapter 2, he began to stir inside of my spirit. He's equipped you. Matter of fact, I even, I even brought some cool props don't even know if I'm going to use them, but I brought some cool props. See, I even had this whole analogy worked out in my head, you know. If we're going to walk through the fire, you know. Firefighter's got to have his jacket and his pants, right? So I grabbed my gear, and I was like, you know, we're going to walk through the fire and, you know, not get burnt. And I realized that all I was doing was I was going to preach Self-effort, self-help. The Holy Spirit checked me and said, it's not about how many layers that you can put on. It's not about how many jackets, how many pants, how many boots, how many masks, how many helmets. It's not about that. That is self-achievement. That is self-effort. And guess what? Even with this on, if I go stand in a burning house, this thing ain't fireproof. 
It's not fireproof. But see, in our efforts, we, we put on what we think God is saying, you know, to put on, we put it on. And we run up in that burning house. I ain't going to get burnt. Shadrach, Meshach, a bed to go. I'm with you. We run up in that house like we ain't going to get burnt. And we get burnt. And then we say, God, you failed me. You're supposed to be with me in the fire. You failed me. I got burnt. All the while, God is asking you, you going to run into a house without water? You think that's what puts out a fire? Ain't none about that. You see, a fire, when you go through the fire academy, they teach you that, they call it the fire triangle, okay? A fire needs three things to survive. Heat, oxygen, and fuel. Three things to survive. Heat, oxygen, fuel. Can I tell you something? If you want to go through the fire, you better have the fire. You better have the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit inside of you. You better let that thing burn so bright inside of you that you can't help but be scorching everything you touch. You see, the reason why Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego survived the fire wasn't because they had layers. They had the fire inside. See, you got to understand, God has equipped you for a purpose. God has equipped you for a reason. Each one in this room. I can sit here and count every head in this room, and I'm going to tell you right now, every single one of y'all has a different calling and purpose. Every single one of y'all. The truth is, you will talk to someone I will never meet. And you will talk to someone I will never meet. And you will talk to someone I will never meet. And you will talk to someone I will never meet. I can't reach everyone. Pastor can't reach everyone. You can't reach everyone, but you can do what you were called. See, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they didn't have to reach everyone. They reached the king and changed the nation. They reached the king and changed the nation simply because of faith and the I am. Simply because they understood that God's got my back. They understood and rested in the finished work that they had not yet seen. All they had was a promise. They hadn't seen Jesus come yet, but they knew Jesus did it because they knew the promise. And they were well equipped. They were well equipped with the Spirit of God. Because it says that when he looked in the fire, he asked his guys, he said, yo, boys, did we throw three? He said, yeah, we, we threw three, three in there. Here's three. One, two, three. Yeah, three. He said, well, there's four jokers in that fire. And one of those boys, he looks like he is God. When people see you walking through the flames and walking through the fire, are they astounded at you or the fourth man in the fire? Are they shocked at you or the Holy Spirit that's got your back? Because I don't want nobody looking at me saying, man, he got all the right clothes. He got the right gear. No, I want them seeing that fourth man. That fourth man is the most important part. This morning, I don't know what fire you're going through. I don't know if it's literal. I don't know if it's spiritual. I don't know if it's physical, if you're dealing with a health situation. I don't know what flames you're up against. I don't. And I'm like, I can sit here, and I can be that, that, that uh, uh, whatever, 5 o'clock on TV, prophet, whatever you want to call me, and I can spit out 500 things and probably nail two of them, okay? That's not what I'm going to do. But this morning, I want you to know something. I don't got to know any of it. God does. God knows everything that you're up against. God knows every fire that you're standing in. God knows every flame that's burnt you already. God knows. And God is right there 
waiting for you to say, I'm going to trust the I am. Stop, stop, stop doing. Stop trying your hardest. The disciples in the book of Acts, they went to the upper room on a promise. They went to the upper room on a promise. Jesus said, go, wait here, I'll send. They went on a promise. They had faith. They had the guarantee of the promise of God that they had not yet seen was already done and they would eventually experience. They went on a promise. All I'm asking you this morning, and you know, it's funny, I, 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 I was praying about this message in, in Wednesday night. I saw on a friend's Facebook, I didn't realize today was technically what they call Pentecost Sunday. <laughs> I want to ask you to do me a favor. First things first, the Holy Spirit of God, if you are a believer, is inside of you. If you feel conviction for sin, the Holy Spirit's doing that. If you are, are, are desiring to pursue God more, that's the Holy Spirit in you. Okay? If you're a believer, you have the Holy Spirit. Okay? There's no doubt in that. But there's a difference of the outpouring of God's Spirit in such a way that everyone around you sees the flame. See, when, when the Holy Spirit fell in Acts chapter 2, it says that they saw tongues like fire. There was a mighty rushing wind, and they began to speak in other people's names, uh, languages, the goodness of God. Can I tell you what that did? Most people don't realize this, but that moment, those three things, wind, fire, and, 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 and the law, or the good works of God, was a remembrance to Israel of Mount Sinai when he delivered them. And God was trying to tell his people in that moment, he sent wind, he sent fire, he sent truth, and he said, I have delivered you. Not just then, but now. And Peter stood up in boldness, and he looked at them, and they were all like, well, maybe these guys have just been drinking. You know, they had a little fit to something, whatever. And Peter said, no, 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 fam. No, 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 no. God that you killed on a cross just a couple, of not too long ago, the same man you crucified, that's what we're talking about, and he wants you. He don't care that you put him on a tree. He loves you. He set you free. See, these flames that we got that burning and you can see on top of us, he wants to give you that too. See, the Holy Spirit of God wants to pour his spirit out in such a way that everyone who comes into contact with you feels that burn. They feel that burn, man. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, uh, some of you in here know what I'm talking about, but if you've ever been in a fire and you got gear on and you come out and, and, and somebody touches your jacket, it's hot. Okay, you can't just bare hand touch a jacket after a house fire. That's what God wants to do in you with the Holy Spirit inside of you. He wants to make it so when people touch you, God, woo, they touch you, woo, God, what is that? And you say, ha, Jesus. <laughs> and you go in and you doing your thing and you in the grocery store and somebody come over and they're like, man, what's up? How you been? Woo, what in the world? And you say, Jesus. Right here, God wants to do that in you. God, well, I'm, 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 I'm fired up this morning because I want to tell you that if you want to go through the fires of life, because trust me, there are plenty of fires, you got to have that fire inside because if you don't have that fire inside, you will die. You will die trying. I'm telling you, it's not worth the energy because you can't do it. It's not worth the energy. It's not worth the effort because no matter how hard you try, you will never do. I'm going to do something. We ain't done this in a while. Pastor, is it okay? I don't know if you know where I'm going, but anyway, I'll ask forgiveness later. Um, this morning, if you're in this place and you say that, 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 that you know, I, I feel like, you know, I got the Holy Spirit in me and, and you know, he, he leads me and he convicts me and, you know, and, and, and all those things. But I, I feel like... I, I, I want that Holy Spirit from Acts chapter 2. I, I, I want people, when, when, they, when they touch me, they, 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 they jerk back because they feel that fire, that Holy Spirit inside of me that's just ready to come out and just take over. I want them to feel that when they touch me. I want, they, I want them to hear that when they hear me talk. I, I, I want them when they see me, I want them to see Jesus in me. I want them to see that Holy Spirit pouring out of me. If you say that this morning, 
could you play some music for me, please? If you said this morning, I want you to come up. And I, and I want you to stand right here, right now. I'm, I'm not talking about later. I'm talking about right now. If you want the Holy Spirit inside of you to, to, to be just pouring out of you, people touch you and they get burnt. They touch you and they jerk back because that Holy Spirit is just, just burning so hot. See, in, in Daniel chapter 3, it says, Nebuchadnezzar heated the furnace up seven times, seven times hotter than it was normally heated. You see, that passage is, 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 is a representation of far hotter than it had ever been. Far hotter than it had ever been. The Holy Spirit of God wants to burn in you so hot. Far hotter than it's ever been. Far hotter than it's ever been in your life. He wants to burn in you. He wants people to touch you. And, and just like the men in Daniel chapter 3, that when they went to throw them in the fire, they burnt up themselves because it was so hot. God's spirit wants to burn in you so hot. So hot. I'm telling you, there's a fire inside of me this morning. And it's not about me. It's not about you. The fire I have inside me is about the things of God. And I want people, when they see me, to see God. And I don't want them to see effort. I don't want them to see anything else but Jesus. When Nebuchadnezzar looked in, he said, he said, we threw three, but there's four, and that fourth one is God. I want people to see God. Just like Nebuchadnezzar saw God. I want them to see God in everything I do. This morning, I'm going to pray for you. And, 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 and I don't know where you are. I don't know anyone out there, but I'm going to pray for everyone who's down here, and I'm going to pray for you too. But I believe God is doing something right now. I believe God is doing something in the hearts and minds of everyone here. And we are going to declare the works of God. Amen. Just like in Acts chapter 2 when it said that they declared the works of God in every man's tongue. I believe that where you go and you speak to men, they will hear the works of God in ways they understand. It doesn't mean in a, in, a, in a natural language. It means that when you speak to people, they will hear God's goodness over them. That's what God wants to do in each of you. And we're going to declare that this morning.